Good morning. As promised, I want to update our animal application to add a couple of derived classes. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the animal class from section 103. You could gra grab any of them, that's fine. Remember, since this is a, zip, a downloaded zip file, I'm going to go look at the zip file and I'm going to right click and extract all before I try to open it in Visual Studio because Visual Studio does not read compressed files. Now that I've got it, I'm going to open my solution and take a look at this project. Each class did a slightly different version of the animal. So I'll show you what we did in this last class. Um, in our form, Not fancy at all. We just have a text box to display output from our different classes. In my animal class, I have a name, gender, and color. I have commented out the species because we're going to take care of that in our extended classes. Then I have gone ahead and created a dog. Let me show you this one a little bit more. You can download this, of course, from Blackboard. And in the dog class, we're extending the animal class. We're deriving from that class. And in addition to the parameters and fields that we have for the animal class, we're going to add a property name to breed to our dog. And we've set the getters and setters for it, and now I've gone ahead and overridden a two string to output and say, hello, I'm a dog. My breed is such and such. Now I need to add a constructor to my dog class because right now it's just using the default animal items. And I will show you that. Let's go to our form. And in our go button, we create an animal. We update a couple of the animal's properties. We output the animal to our text box. Then we create a dog and output that to our text box. So if you notice, my first animal and my dog are going to get my default my default property settings. Fred is the name, etc. So we can create some additional constructors so that we can override all those values. I'm going to do that first. So in my animal class, right now, the constructor that we created was a default without any parameters. I'm going to create a constructor that accepts all of the animal parameters. So a name, oh, it's a string. And our car, a gender. Notice that I'm using different variable names as my parameter names because I don't want to confuse them with the class variables. And lastly, I had a string for my animal color. Now, in this method, since I have all of my data types being passed as parameters into my animal constructor, I can set up my class appropriately so that now I can have people pass the information that they want for their, their animal. I'm going to go back to my form. I'm going to get rid of some of this extra stuff here in the middle where I um, was overriding some of the animal parameters. And now when I create an animal, I'm going to include his name, um, his gender, and his color. Now when I run my form, we should see our animal named Joseph, who is blue. 
Oh, there he is. And then underneath we have our dog. Notice our dog is still using our default annual constructor where we set the name to Fred. So let's override that in our dog. In our dog class, we didn't have any constructors, which if you notice, it still worked. It just didn't give us necessarily what we wanted. So first I'm gonna create a dog without any parameters, a default. And in our default, we're just going to say that the breed is Collie. Now remember, in this situation, we're going to take all of the default constructors for the animal for this dog. Now I'm going to add another Oops, semicolon in the wrong place there. I'm going to add another constructor here to pass all of the parameters to my dog. And this time, I'm going to use the animal name, the animal gender, um, the animal color, and then I'm going to add the animal breed for my dog. Now when I specify it this way, that's fine, it's a little mad at me, um, I need to go ahead and tell Visual Studio which parameters are coming from my base class. And in this case, it is my a name, a gender, and a color. Now, I need to update this a little bit because notice I left out the data types just to show you how important that is, right? And then string, and our breed is a string also. Okay, so now we have our dog constructor, and we're saying I'm going to allow you to pass all of the information about this dog in to create it. So let's go back to our form. And instead of doing it this way, let's create a dog using all of the parameter types. So I'm going to name my dog Felix. He's going to be male, I guess. Um, he's going to be brown and a beagle. Now when I run, we should see our animal and our dog. Oops, I've got some problem here. What's my problem? Oh, I should have used single quotes there. Can you hear all that? Everything's getting up. Okay, let's run this and then I'm going to stop. Perfect. Oops. No breed. Let me fix that. Why is that? Because in our dog, when we created this constructor, I didn't say breed equal a breed. Now, I need to do a few other things here too, don't I? Notice how it's defaulted to the properties because I've got access to my class outside of the class. Oh, let's see in our dog, in our animal, did we expose our color? We better go do that. I'm going to go back to my animal and I'm going to need to update my getters and setters for that. I will be right back in a second video to do that for you in just a moment. 